Hello, thank you for joining me today for this 10-minute takeaway. My name is Jim Baths, and I'm a customer engagement strategist out of Alpharetta, Georgia. My perspective as a customer experience leader is that implementing and improving customer experience does not always have to be a costly venture. There are many resources right in front of us that can make a big impact on customer experience. We just need to know how and when to use these tools and resources to achieve maximum results. The tool we're going to focus on today is the Net Promoter System. I've been working with NPS professionally since 2012. I was fortunate to earn my Net Promoter Certification under Satin Metrics Chief Client Officer Deborah Eastman. Today I want to show you how to improve your Net Promoter Score by using the Net Promoter System as a customer and employee engagement tool. You probably already know this. The Net Promoter Score is much more than a number. Sometimes businesses get so focused on the score that, that they lose sight of the improvement and engagement opportunities that it brings. This presentation will help you get back on track. The content I'll share with you today is based on my own experience of using the Net Promoter System as an engagement tool. As a result, we were able to significantly increase the Net Promoter Score and improve products, services, and relationships. I'm also going to give you a few suggestions on the types of performance targets and goals that businesses should focus on instead of the score. In most any situation where you are trying to solve a problem, knowing which tool to use is pretty important. For example, you wouldn't want to chop down a tree with hedge clippers or water your garden with a shovel. And once you've selected the right tool, like an axe, to chop down a tree, you have to make sure you're using the tool the right way. The blade must be sharpened. You have to focus the blade in a specific way. You have to target the blade to a specific location. And then you have to swing the handle in such a way that the blade starts to break down the tree. From an NPS standpoint, we need to remember that the Net Promoter System is a tool. And the Net Promoter Score is a measure in time. Do the right things and the numbers will reflect all the great things that you're doing. But the Net Promoter System is not just any tool, it's an engagement tool. When you use it the right way and combine it with regular communications to your customers and employees, it creates a powerful attraction. This attraction engages customers and employees. The power of this attraction makes passives become promoters. It causes non-respondents to engage again and be willing to become promoters and your promoters actually start promoting you. They become referenceable and they bring in more promoters. The detractors will either become your trusted advisors and promoters or they'll move on. But here's where the rubber meets the road. Sometimes we get confused and think the score is the tool or the goal. The danger with making the net promoter score the goal is that the score or number becomes the focus. It's human nature and we can't help it. When this happens, the organization's focus is no longer on the customer and their voice and their verbatims. And then we're no longer using the net promoter score as a measure or a gauge, a guide or a signal. It has become the goal. At this point, we're no longer using the net promoter system as a tool. We've become slaves to the number and we lose our way. We lose, si we lose sight of why we're using it in the first place. We lose sight of the desired outcome of loyalty, better products, service, and relationships. There's nothing wrong with making the score your goal as long as your net promoter system is, that's in place is mature. Because businesses that have mature net promoter systems have a customer-centric culture in place and have already gone through the pains of creating it. The customer facing and customer managing roles know how to create promoters and demonstrate it regularly. And the business is organized to meet customer needs rather than to manage business performance. And the business has a proven track record of several years of consistently delivering improvements and communications to both customers and employees. Mature net promoter systems do much more than predict loyalty. They cultivate it. If you have a mature net promoter system, then you may want to incorporate the score into your targets and performance goals. 
But if your system is not mature, this next slide I'm going to show you is going to help you with goal setting in your organization so that you can define the right goals which create focus on doing the right things which create this mature net promoter systems. The result can be astounding. Using the tool the right way means doing the right things. The right things from a net promoter system perspective are putting the promoters to work and ampl amplifying their voices, engaging the passives, reaching out to and recommitting to the non-responders, converting the detractors and making them trusted advisors, implementing improvement plans and simplifying business processes and infrastructures. Let's take a, clo a closer look at why it's important to focus on these areas rather than the score. First, promoters begat promoters. The power of the net promoter system is putting your promoters to work. Goal setting in the promoter area should be focused on creating the programs and platforms that put your promoters to work. You see some examples here like increasing reference accounts, testimonials, videos, and blogs. Passives just need a reason to be a promoter. Actually, they want a reason to be a promoter, so give it to them. Show them on a regular basis that you're listening and taking action, and they'll become promoters. Goal setting in the passive area should be around the volume and frequency of communications. You should also create a conversion target, like 30%, uh, convert 30% of your passives into promoters. Depending on the number of detractors you have, you may have to be strategic on who you focus on. But communicate with them more frequently so that they know you are engaged and listening and taking action. Approach them with the goal of making them your trusted advisors. Again, your goals should contain a communication aspect as well as a conversion target. Your non-responders are just waiting for that proverbial last straw. They are ready to move to your competitor competitor. But if they see that you're taking action and, and engaging your customer base to create improvements, they will be attracted. Why? Because they already know the cost to switch to your competitor. When they see that you're taking action, a financial conversation happens in their heads. They know it's cheaper and easier to stay with you. And now that you're taking customer feedback seriously, they can trust that their voices will be heard too. So it's a big win. The critical goals here are to communicate regularly so that they see what you're doing to improve. But you also need to include a goal that's going to be more around a personal reach out or a personal recommit to a strategic group of non-respondents. And as you move your focus from scores to improvements, be sure the business has an appetite to deliver improvements and just how much. Be sure to let the customers help you validate what you've heard them say and let them help you prioritize what you deliver. Your goals should contain the implementation of an improvement plan, and again, you see this common theme for regular communications. Throughout the organization, you should be looking for ways to simplify internal and external processes. Being easy to do business with and providing a simple work environment is the foundation for employee and customer satisfaction and loyalty. Find ways to talk in simple language. Get rid of the technical speak and the corporate terms and the acronym language. Be easy, human, and plain in the way you speak and communicate. To be sure you start simplifying now, create or execute on a business simplification strategy as a goal. And be sure it's part of the internal and external communication strategy. In summary, if you focus on the things that engage your cut customers and employees, you start improving NPS right away. When you use the NPS tool the right way, you, cre you increase customer engagement and employee engagement through regular communications. This shows, your sincere de this shows your sincere desire and ability to listen, take action, and improve. The result is an engaged customer base and workforce. This translates into loyalty and higher profit, profits through lower marketing and lower attrition costs. As the culture in your organization transforms into one of listening and taking action, the score-focused behaviors will be replaced with improvement-focused actions. Basically, you'll be doing the right things and the number will take care of itself. 
Thanks again for joining me today for this 10-minute takeaway. I hope you'll connect with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or on my blog so that we can continue the conversation. Have a great day.